I don't like being reined in any more than you do. Today on Horseland. Chili, come back here. Chili is spooked by frightening encounters with a ghostly horse. Who's there? You don't belong here. And an all too real mountain lion. Danger! <laughs> Look at them out there. Ridiculous. Hey, Shep, don't they look like they're having fun? Don't you wish you were a horse sometime? You have got to be kidding, Teeny. Why do you say that, Angora? They do look mighty happy out there. Please, look at them. When one of them runs, they all run. It's like they have no minds of their own. Now, Angora, they're just having fun. Just once, I'd like to see them think for themselves. Every one of those horses is a real individual. But when they want to, they work and play together. They have their own horse society, you see. And they're all a part of it. I still say it's ridiculous. Maybe you forgot what happened that night up in the moonlit meadow. Did you hear that? Listen. I don't hear anything, Chili. It came from out there, somewhere toward the meadow. You're imagining things. I'm telling you, there's something out there. Quiet down, Chili. I'm trying to get some sleep. Me too. It's late. All right, but there's something very strange out there. So? Watch it! Watch the cat! Don't get dirt on the cat! What a revolting display of herd mentality! Why can't horses be more independent? Why can't they act like individuals? They're just as individual as you, Angara. But they've learned to live in groups, in a sort of society. For yourselves. Hey, I think for myself. That's what makes me so good at high-stepping lateral moves. And why do you think I'm the best at barrel racing? Racing, running, jumping. That's doing what they tell you to do. But you can't help it. You're just horses. <laughs> Easy there. What's the matter here, Scarlet? They'll calm down once we get them saddled up and in the practice ring. Now see what you started. Did I do that? Guess we better get started. You and Aztec are first in the ring, Bailey. Okay, Aztec. Let's show them how it's done. Whoa, Whoa Bailey, you okay? What happened? I know I checked that girth. Aztec must have taken a deep breath and puffed himself up when you were cinching the saddle. Horses do that sometimes. Aztec's never done that before. Hmm. Easy boy. <laughs> They're all acting sort of strange today. Could they be sick? I'll ask Uncle John to call Dr. Martin and have him take a look at them. The doc says there's nothing physically wrong with the horses. That's a relief. But what is wrong with them? Hey, maybe they've just got attitude. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Sometimes horses get bored, restless. Dr. Martin said a trail ride might settle them down, burn off some energy. <laughs> Easy, 
you, Scarlet. <laughs> it was an accident. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Aztec? You don't usually act like that. <laughs> Aztec! Where are you going? <laughs> Hang on, Bailey. <laughs> Thank you, Chloe. I don't know what's gotten into these horses. I don't know what's bothering the horses. Let's give them a rest, huh? They're all acting funny. And not funny, haha. -ha. I don't like being reined in any more than you do, but why'd you try to brush Bailey right out of the saddle? I'm through being told what to do and how to do it. And if you wanted to be your own boss, you'd be doing something about it, too. Hey, I am my own boss. You think I won't do something about it? I'll show you. See? I'm free, on my own. I don't need the rest of you. What's going on now? Where's Chili? <laughs> Easy, Jimber. Easy, boy. Chili, come back here. Chili? We'll have to go after him. Come on, Jimber. Hey, what about me? We can ride double while we look for Chili. <laughs> Thanks, Bailey. We'll get him back. He couldn't have gone too far. Chili! Chili! Where are you, Chili? Chili! Chili! Where are you, boy? Sorry, Chloe, but I'm going to show everybody that I do think for myself. Chili! Almost sunset. We better call this off and get back to Horseland. We can't leave Chili out here all alone in the mountains overnight. Chili knows these hills as well as any horse. He'll find his way back to Horseland. Kinda spooky out here. But nothing for a horse like me to be afraid of. I'm okay on my own. I don't need the rest of them. Who's there? I know you're there. Come out where I can see you. What are you doing here? You don't belong here. A g ghost <laughs> I said you shouldn't be here. Go back with the others of your herd. I don't need them. I'm not part of any herd. I said go back where you belong. <laughs> Chili's probably having the time of his life out there. And we're stuck here. Same old stable, same old routine. I hope he's all right. Alone out there, at night. What was that? You won't believe what I just s s saw in the m m meadow. A g, g ghost horse. What? A g g ghost? There's no such thing as ghosts, Chili. It was probably just a moon shadow. I saw it. It's out there. A ghost. Oh, I'm scared, Chip. Chili, you're back. Am I glad to see you? I was so worried I couldn't sleep last night. <gasps> What's wrong, Chili? Don't worry, 
sorry, Chloe. He probably just had a hard night out there. It couldn't have been any fun being out there all alone. Chili's gonna be worn out from that adventure. No use practicing today. Let's put him in the paddock while we get the stables mucked out. I'm going to the meadow and find out what Chili saw. Oh, oh, I wanna go with you. Come on, Angora. Oh, please. I've got better things to do than wander around the mountains getting burrs in my fur. Suit yourself. Yeah, we're on a mission. Find something? This is where the other horse was. You said horse. Are you sure it wasn't a ghost, Chili Saw? It was definitely a real horse. No ghost would leave a scent. The trail leads back into the woods. Well, we've come this far. We should follow the trail, right? No. We found what we came here for. Come on, Tinny. If we leave now, we can get back to Horseland before it's too dark. Oh, yeah, right. Hey, maybe we'll make it back for dinner time. I'm starving. At least we didn't have to work out in the arena today. And at least we don't have any ghosts here. <laughs> there aren't any ghosts in the meadow either. <gasps> Tini and I went there. The horse you saw was real. You saw him? I picked up his scent. It was a horse. A wild horse. Probably lived his whole life up in the mountains, alone. Yeah, doing whatever he wants, whenever he wants to. And you missed a chance to live free because you were afraid of a wild horse. I'll show you who's not afraid. <gasps> Hello? Are you still here? I want to talk to you. Aztec? What are you doing here? Why did you follow me? I don't follow anybody. Angora was right. Even when I try to be my own horse, you do the same thing I do. I came up here because I wanted to. I found this place first. Ahem. I have as much right to be here as you. So do I. That goes for me too. <laughs> and me. <laughs> You remind me of the first horses. It's you again. What do you mean, first horses? Is that the ghost horse? It was a long time ago. Long before Europeans brought the horses who were our ancestors. In those days, horses had no language, since they had no call to speak to each other. Each was alone, not part of a group. Each did what he alone wanted to do. It's fun to do only what you want, but it can be difficult and dangerous when you're not part of a horse society. I get by on my own with no problem. That's what the first horses thought too. But you can never tell what dangers may be waiting and when you might need the help of a friend. In the old time, when the first horses lived alone, each did what he wanted, when he wanted. <laughs> they had no friends. They were alone. <laughs> when the first horses met, they fought. It took the first horses a long time to learn we're happier, safer, and stronger when we are part of a group, a society. But sometimes I don't want to be part of a group. The important thing is to be both who you are as an individual and also to be part of your horse society. The first horses didn't know how to do that. They only cared about themselves. <laughs> Even in times of danger. 
the first horses thought only of themselves. It would take many years, but slowly they began to see they needed each other. We all have our part to play. I can take care of myself. But sometimes it helps to have help. No one horse can do everything. Times when we need one another. <laughs> it was the need to work together which led the first horses to speak. Up. Must. Get. Up. Help was given, help was taken, and friendships were made. And the first horses became a true society. They gave up some freedom to live in a group. <laughs> but they found it was better for them all. In the group, there was friendship and a way to help and be helped. Together as a society of horses, there was no problem or danger they could not overcome. But sometimes I just want to be alone and do what I want to do. We all feel that way at times. And it can be a good thing if you don't go too far. Like trying to run away from my stable mates? Always remember that being part of a society of horses means you care about one another through good times and bad times. Do you smell that? Mountain Lion! <laughs> well done! You belong with one another and with the humans of your stable. And remember, they've given up part of their freedom to take care of you because they love you. He's right. We need to get back to Horseland. Alma will be worried if she finds out I'm gone. They'll all be worried about us. Come back with us. We can't leave you alone up here in the mountains. What makes you think I'm alone? <laughs> this is my group, my society. The mountains are our home. Goodbye, my Horseland friends. Let's go home. <laughs> They're not in the paddock. Where could they have gone? This running away isn't getting to be a habit. <laughs> Just look at your coat. It's full of burrs and twigs. It'll take me forever to curry those out. But I don't mind. I'm just so glad to have you back. I think they could all use a good grooming and a feed bag of oats. <laughs> I sure am glad everyone's back home. I am, I am. The horses learned something important that night. They learned something about living together and getting along. I guess that's all right for you social animals. But we cats are solitary creatures. We like to be on our own. Then why do you curl up against me when you go to sleep every night? Uh, well, uh, because you're... Born. And maybe because you like Teeny's company and mine. 
The idea! That's okay, Angara. You don't have to say it. We know.